Hey everybody, this is Kamari Ellis. This is an episode of the Finance Roman Show. I want to do this episode with the mortgage queen, Liz Parrish, aka Medicine of Mortgages, because we talk about mortgages all the time. And there were some things I wanted to talk about in terms of business ownership. Because at the end of the day, there are a lot of us in my audience who are business owners and are struggling trying to figure out how to get a mortgage. So Liz, can you tell everybody who you are? I'm Elizabeth Paris. I am a senior loan officer with Cardinal Financial. I've been at this just about nine years. And yes, I am, as you can find me on social media, medicine, the number two mortgages. She's so cool. So I had a question for you. Thank you, number one. Absolutely. All right. But we're talking about business ownership, how hard it is for them to get a mortgage. Do you see that a lot? I always say it all the time, actually. One of the reasons why it's so challenging is just has comes down to how they're filing their taxes. Business owners sometimes take certain liberties that are not conducive to them getting a mortgage or being approved for a home mortgage. So oftentimes they have to go back to how they file their tax returns. So Liz speaks more eloquently than I do, right? <laughs> so she, she said liberties. Hmm. What liberties are we talking about? Oftentimes uh, business owners, freelancers, self-employed borrowers are writing off way more than they actually need to be in regards to their tax returns, which limits their income that I can use to qualify them for a mortgage or to show that they have the ability to repay a mortgage. Uh -huh. So are these expenses real or made up? So I honestly can't tell you what they are or not because I haven't filed their taxes, but what I can tell you is that I am very aware when I see extreme write-offs based on income. And after having a conversation with the client, I can tell them whether or not they need to reevaluate how they file. Okay. So I don't know what they are. I don't look at their books. I don't do their bookkeeping. I'm not their tax preparer. But I can often tell when there are too many liberties taken in order for them to be able to purchase. Liberties. So what I call it is, <laughs> I'm trying to be clean today. So but what I call it is, is fabrications or lies or Bullshit, um, but y'all didn't hear me say that. So, there's a lot of business owners a lot of times, and why I rock with Liz is because I run into a lot of mortgage brokers who will tell their clients explicitly not to write off certain things or to write off certain things to make their taxes look better for the underwriting than what they actually are. Is that a real thing or am I just making it up? No, that happens. That happens often. And I get asked that question a lot. I often do not answer that question. I often say you need to reevaluate with your tax preparer and go back over your books and make sure that you are filing appropriately because I'm not a tax preparer and also I like my job. Okay. All right. That's very mm -hmm. So what should a business owner be ready to do so they can get a mortgage? First, I'll present the episode. My episode. I'll present the scenario. First, I'm a homeowner making $100,000 a year in their business. That's all they do. They don't do anything else. What should they be ready to do? Should be thinking about who it's time to buy a home and get a mortgage. Absolutely need to make sure that they have two months of bank statements for their personal and their business accounts because they are nothing but a business owner. We're gonna look at both of those to assess what assets are available, also to track expenses and um, earnings. They also need to make sure that they're properly registered and licensed so that those, those, that's information that can be searched on public record because underwriters, which you approve or deny your loan, are going to look for that information. Um, they also need to be able to properly document that they have been filing for the last two, three, four, five years or however long they've been in business. They need to be able to have tax records to show that. Um, and then also they need to make sure that they are netting enough income, which means after write-offs, there's enough income left over for me to show your ability to afford a mortgage or be able to repay a mortgage. Those are gonna definitely be some things that, are, that come up and are necessary for my $100,000 business owner. Okay, now you said something through our presentation. You said that mortgage underwriting looks at the tax account who prepares the return. Absolutely. Why? Why do they know who I am? They need to know who you are because they want to make sure that you are not fraudulent yourself. They need to make sure that you are, there's a footprint of your business, there is a footprint of your track record. They even look to see if you are actually registered with uh, as, as a 
tax preparer as well. So there's a database that can be searched. I believe it's the IRS. I feel like it's to another database, but I don't know the name. Forgive me. Thank you. Where they search for your name and your licensing. So you need to make sure you're working with a licensed tax preparer who can be found through those searchable resources because the underwriter is looking for that person. They want to make sure that you are also legitimately in business and that you don't have any sanctions or any other issues that may pop up in regards to how you operate. So that sounds like I'm getting a mortgage. So how do they know if a tax preparer has done something for them to That's the information that I do not know how to properly search, but they can absolutely find it. But they get it. They get it. And if you all know anything about banking and medical, they know all the secrets. So. And, and I want to be clear, the underwriter, what the underwriter has access to, I don't have access to. There are things that I have access to, but the underwriter has access to things I do not. So often when we are asking for our clients to be fully truthful and upfront, and I'm asking you who your tax preparer is, I know it's intrusive, but we need that information because any small misstep in information or how to present your file can lead to a mortgage now. And sometimes it's hard to overcome that. Does that follow you? I would say in regards to the type of financing, yes. Like FHA, VA, USDA loans, government insured loans, yes, the analysis follow here. Okay, last question. Yes. Best type of loan. FHA, conventional, I'm hearing people talk about the farm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the best type of loan is a loan that actually helps you accomplish your financial goals. I, I'm, I'm, that's the serious thing I'm always going to say. I, that was almost like Siri giving a response. It, it's going to be Siri every time I say it because the reality of it is you have to get the type of financing plan that makes sense for your financial situation. What's good for one person isn't good for the other. So there is no what's the perfect loan to use or what's the best loan. It's what's the best loan for your financial situation. Okay. Your financial situation. Now your mama, not your daddy, not your cousin and them, not poopy down the street. Okay. Okay. So can you give us a quick breakdown of what FHA conventional is? Gotcha. So FHA loan is a government insured loan. It is backed by HUD. What that means is the government insures it so that there's a greater amount of risk that can be assessed through that financing option. You have lower minimum credit scores. You have lower down payment, which is 3.5%. Minimum credit score on an FHA loan for some lenders is 580. You can go all the way down to, I think, 550. As they heard me say earlier, do not bring any lender a 580 or a 550. Work to have at least a 620, okay? Especially Why? because the economy is hard and the lower your credit score, you are at higher credit risk, which means it is more difficult to lend to you. That is just how the rules are, right? Um, so that's FHA in a nutshell. Uh, you have mortgage insurance um, premiums monthly and for the life of the loan. And then you have something called an upfront mortgage insurance premium as well. That's all federally mandated. I cannot control that for anyone asking, right? Conventional is uh, non-government insured. The minimum score requirement on that is a 620. Um, that is the loan that most people get scared of because they think they have to put down 20%. And the truth is, if you're a first-time buyer, you only have to put down 3% at minimum. So, because I hear that for FHA, it's like 3.5. Mm -hmm. So, conventional will... Three type three percent also three percent down. Correct. So sometimes conventional, as you're saying, can be a better option. Be better than FHA. Right, but you have to have a stronger credit score because the minimum score requirement on conventional is six twenty. Often in this economy, I have found that a six eighty or even having a seven hundred and higher is better for conventional loans. Right, and you have the option to remove private mortgage insurance, which everyone talks about. And so what I like to give people the most clear understanding, oftentimes conventional requires a little bit more money up front, but less money over time. Where FHA or other government short loans are a little more money, um, I'm sorry, less money up front, but more money over time. It just depends what makes sense for you. Wow. Well, Liz, thank you for giving me a piece of your time. No problem. I appreciate that. You gotta come back. I am. And I know you're gonna have the podcast rolling out soon yes. too. Yes. Are you ready to talk about that? Medicine and Mortgages podcast that will be dropping at the end of this month for Women's History Month. Oh. Right off the tail end of Black History Month. Thank you. Right. Um, and I'll be talking all things mortgages, uh, career transitions, and also just kind of the in-between. Finance is very important for our community, so I'm just here to give a little bit more insight and information. And where can I be find you again? You can find me on Instagram, Medicine the Number Two Mortgages, and very soon on YouTube, Medicine the Number Two Mortgages. All right. Thank you, Liz. I appreciate it. You're you. welcome. Thanks for having me. Right. Mm -hmm. Done.